So today's topic is thyroid disorders. The topic of thyroid is not given in your textbook. It's just briefly done in nutrition science textbook in the chapter of iodine. Okay, but apart from that, uh, in the dietetics textbook, there is no no any mention of thyroid disorders. Okay, so we'll discuss about what are the different types of thyroid disorders. Okay, what kind of diet may trigger thyroid disorder and what supplementations or diet can solve it. Okay, so this topic is again not from the textbook. Wednesday classes are extra classes that we do just to enhance your information regarding certain medical terminologies and some disease conditions, different disease conditions, physiology of disease conditions. Am I audible to all? So thyroid disorder, thyroid disorder, the symptoms depend on whether the thyroid is under or over producing the hormones. Okay. Am I audible to all? So if your thyroid hormone, thyroid gland is under producing the hormones, it's hypothyroidism and if it is over producing it is hyperthyroidism okay and some thyroid issues are autoimmune which means your own immune cells your own immunity cells will go and attack the thyroid gland okay so that is an autoimmune thyroid disorder treatment for thyroid disorders is often successful and depending on the condition or at what level of thyroid disorders okay uh, either it could be some medications surgical removal of thyroid gland okay or any tumors in thyroid gland that can be surgically removed or some other therapy like radiation therapy in case of thyroid cancers okay radiation therapy can be given so what does thyroid do what is this gland what does it do so thyroid is a butterfly kind of a shape uh, gland. It is located in front of your neck. Okay, It produces hormones that play a key role in regulating your blood pressure, body temperature, heart rate and most importantly your metabolism. Okay, Thyroid hormones are responsible for your metabolism. Okay, And also how your body reacts to other certain hormones. Thyroid hormones play an important role in these areas. Okay. So this is how a thyroid gland looks like. Okay. And just behind thyroid gland, this is the front view, anterior view of thyroid gland. If you look behind, not inside, behind the thyroid gland, you will find four parathyroid glands positioned like this on the four corners of thyroid gland you will find four parathyroid glands positioned like this. Okay. This is the basic of thyroid glands. Okay. We will not go in detail of it. So thyroid hormones. To secrete thyroid hormones, there are two other hormones that has to be secreted. Okay. Your hypothalamus has to re release thyrotropin releasing hormone. Okay, and because of the thyroid tropic releasing hormone, thyroid TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone will be released, okay, by the pituitary gland. And from there, and once the TSH is released, only then your thyroid gland can secrete T3 and T4. These are the two main hormones. Calcit uh, uh, calcitonin is also released by thyroid gland, okay, but mainly it's T3 and T4. Okay. These are the two main thyroid hormone. Triiodothyroxine, tetraiodothyroxine. This is the full form of T3 and T4. 
in T3, three iodine components are found. In T4, four iodine components are found. That's the way it is named. Okay. So, first TRH has to be released. And because of the release of TRH, TSH will be released, thyroid stimulating hormone from the name itself. You will understand thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH will go and stimulate the thyroid gland to secrete more thyroid hormone. So, if your body does not produce TSH, thyroid gland will not get the signal to release thyroid hormones. Okay. If your body is overproducing TSH, okay, if your body is overproducing thyroid stimulating hormone, your thyroid gland will be triggered more frequently to release more thyroid hormones and that's how you get into hyperthyroidism okay is it clear so far Coming to the functions of thyroid gland in detail, okay. First is the main function that is your general metabolism, thyroid gland and its general metabolism. So, it increases your metabolic rate, the way how you break down food, digest food, okay, break down food, the way how oxygen is used up by the tissues in your body, okay. Except uh, uh, testes, uterus, lymph nodes and anterior, anterior pituitary, all the other, other tissues in your body, the way how they use oxygen depends on thyroid hormones. It increases the synthesis and activity of a lot of enzymes. Okay. Enzymes has to be produced and the way how enzymes function in your body. This is how enzymes are what? They help break down the molecules. Enzymes help break down the molecules. That's how thyroid hormones help in metabolism. If there are no enzymes, the breakdown of food molecules will be very slow. Okay. It increases the size and number and activity of mitochondria. Mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of your cells. Okay. The more mitochondria you have, and the bigger mitochondria you have in your body, more will be the oxygen consumed, more will be the fat consumed up by your body cells and you will be more energetic. Okay, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell means it produces energy. How does it produce energy? It will take up glucose, it will take up fat, it will take up oxygen and then give you energy. Okay, so more fat burning will take place more glucose burning will take place in your body. When you have too many mitochondria, bigger in size and number, automatically your body becomes a fat burning machine. Okay? And it increases the rate and formation of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, to energize the cellular function. ATP is released to get energy. ATP okay it has three phosphate ion triphosphate when one phosphate ion breaks from atp it becomes adenosine diphosphate okay and when this breakdown here happens when the bond of one phosphate breaks from atp and it becomes adp that's when you get energy okay So, these are the general metabolism function. Now, coming to specific metabolism like lipid. How does thyroid hormone break down your fat? Okay. All aspects of fat metabolism are increased on the secretion of thyroid hormone. Why? Thyroid hormone will accelerate the oxidation of fatty acids by the cell. Okay. It will make sure that more and more Fatty acids are getting burned in the cell, are getting used up in the cell, which means your fat storage in the body will go down because the body is using up the fat to burn 
एंड गेट एनर्जी ओके लोअर लेवल्स ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रॉल बिकॉज कोलेस्ट्रॉल इज ऑल्सो अ फैटी एसिड बट वेन योर बॉडी इज यूजिंग कोलेस्ट्रॉल अप देर इज नो कोलेस्ट्रॉल दैट विल बी लेफ्ट बैक टू गिव यू हार्ट डिजीज ओके फॉस्फोलिपिड्स विल बी विल बी यूज अप ट्राईग्लिसराइड्स विल बी यूज अप दीज ऑल आर फैटी एसिड्स इफ दे स्टे इन युअर बॉडी इफ दे आर स्टक इन युअर बॉडी ओके दे विल फॉर्म प्लैग दे विल गिव यू कार्डियोवास्कुलर डिजीजेस ओके इट ऑल्सो स्टिम्युलेट्स द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एल डी एल रिसेप्टर्स द मोर एल डी एल रिसेप्टर्स यू हैव एल डी एल इज अ टाइप ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रॉल बैड कोलेस्ट्रॉल ओके वेन यू डोंट हैव इनफ एल डी एल रिसेप्टर्स द कोलेस्ट्रॉल डज नॉट नो वेर टू गो ओके वन मिनिट so the more ldl receptors you have in your body cholesterol will have a direction to go a place to go a goal to reach when you don't have enough ldl receptors ldl that is low density lipids they will stay in your blood they will stay in your blood vessels and cause blockages okay so this is how thyroid hormones helps in lipid metabolism is it clear to all protein metabolism next how does thyroid hormone helps in protein metabolism small doses of thyroid hormone increases the rate of formation of proteins by ribosomes that is at your dna level dna rna level okay helping the rna ribonucleic acids and ribosomes to produce more proteins okay and protein is required for dna and rna production as well it increases rna synthesis by the genes okay because of amino acids that you get from protein more rna ribonucleic acid is produced at your genetic level okay and large doses of thyroid hormone can lead to access catabolism of muscle protein what is catabolism breakdown if there is too much of thyroid hormone your own body protein that is your muscle protein that you already have in your body that will be broken down so large doses of thyroid hormone in terms of uh, in terms of hyperthyroidism that's why people who have hyperthyroidism they can't put on weight they can't put on muscle okay because their own thyroid hormones in large doses is breaking down their body it's breaking down the muscle protein okay so that's how protein muscle metabolism is affected by thyroid in your gi system it increases the secretion of digestive juices motility the way how food moves in your intestine the appetite that you feel the food intake that you have okay to have a control over it okay is it increased appetite low appetite depends on your thyroid hormone okay and also other hormones like leptin and ghrelin they are also responsible okay not just thyroid hormones and it is necessary for hepatic conversion of carotene to vitamin a carotene is the vitamin a that you get from plant sources to convert carotene into vitamin a so that your liver can store it your liver cannot store carotene your liver has to store vitamin a 
so keratin has to be converted into vitamin a to be stored in the liver okay so if thyroid hormones are decreased you are eating vitamin a rich food you are having keratin rich food but there is nothing in your liver that can do this conversion where will the keratin go they will stay in your blood and that's how you get keratinemia keratinemia too much of keratin in your blood because these keratins are not been converted into vitamin a and stored in the liver okay reproduction in your reproductive organs essential for normal menstrual cycles okay women who have abnormal thyroid functioning they will miss their cycle they will not have a normal menstrual cycle okay fertility issues are common among thyroid patients and if you have good secretion of thyroid gland thyroid hormones while lactating women while they are lactating there will be increased milk secretion increased milk production okay because of the presence of thyroid hormone growth and development it is essential for normal growth of soft tissue and skeletal tissue so mothers who are taking uh, med uh, iodine medications or uh, thyroid suppressing medications during pregnancy okay it will affect their infants the, the their infant may suffer from growth retardation okay no, small babies who are deficient in iodine will not produce enough thyroid hormone and it will affect their growth okay the children may undergo growth retardation mental retardation physical growth retardation if they do not produce enough thyroid hormone it is required for production and action growth of hormones and even igf growth factors igf are growth factors okay for growth hormone production and growth factor production you re require thyroid hormone okay if you do not have thyroid hormone the way how growth hormones function in your body becomes suppressed okay there will be not enough growth factors produced in your body so definitely your growth and development will be affected if you don't have enough thyroid hormone respiration increased respiration the and more you respire more will be the oxygen that you have in your body dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin by increasing the amount of uh, 2 3 dpg in rbc rbc is the is your red blood cell okay which has hemoglobin and hemoglobin is supposed to carry oxygen the tissues okay and the way how oxygen should disassociate from the hemoglobin so that tissues can use it cells can use it okay for this thyroid hormone is required if you don't have enough th thyroid hormone you are breathing you will definitely breathe you will have oxygen in your body but the oxygen does not know how to detach itself from the rbc how to detach itself from the hemoglobin okay so the tissues will not get oxygen cells will not get oxygen you will be tired okay even you're breathing you're eating food everything but you will be lethargic you will be tired in the cardiovascular system increased number and affinity of beta 1 adrogen uh, adrenergic receptors in the heart this is this is a specific kind of receptor that you have in your heart and because of this your heart becomes sensitive to catecholamine and because of which the uh, contraction and uh, relaxation of the heart takes place okay increased rate of blood flow to the skin for heat elimination okay so uh, those who suffer from thyroid disorders they usually suffer from cold skin why because they don't have in, uh, too much of blood flow into their skin okay they may have cold skin and increased cardiac output there will be increase in the systolic bp uh, high bp but decrease in the diastolic pressure okay thus pulse pressure will be high systolic bp is the upper part of the bp when we say normal bp 120 by 80 120 is the systolic bp when your heart is contracting okay the pressure that heart has that is systolic when the heart is relaxing the pressure that heart a heart puts on the vessels okay that is diastolic so 
so your cardiac output also increases or been or, or is maintained okay by a healthy functioning thyroid gland nervous system it promotes growth and development of brain okay even in the fetal life as i mentioned even during pregnancy normal su uh, supplementation of iodine should be there okay for the feet uh, for the infants development brain development and also for the first few years after birth essential for normal myelination and development of nervous system in infants myelination is a process in which myelin sheath is formed in the neurons okay, that is anatomical part you don't have to think much about it just understand for the development growth and development of central nervous system thyroid hormone is responsible okay Increased response of brain to catecholamines and increased activation of RAS. Okay, catecholamines, just like how heart has receptors to catecholamines, uh, your brain also has receptors to catecholamines. But do they respond to catecholamines? That is important. Okay, so just by secreting catecholamines, it is not uh, it does not work. Your brain and your heart to suit should respond to catecholamines okay catecholamines are hormones which are secreted by your adrenal glands and they are responsible for your reaction to any physical stress okay the how the body responds to any emotional and physical stress catecholamines are responsible for it okay like norepinephrine and epinephrine okay like these are the fight flight and fight hormones if you have heard of it Catecholamines are the fight and flight hormones. Is it clear to all so far? So almost all the systems have some or the other various an important function that thyroid hormone is supposed to do in, in majority of your body systems next what causes thyroid problems okay it could be iodine deficiency in your diet okay or wherever you are staying like if you are staying in hilly regions okay hilly mountainous regions definitely your diet is naturally low in iodine okay if you suffer from autoimmune diseases like graves disease or Hashimoto disease your own immune system is attacking your thyroid gland. This happens in Graves disease and Hashimoto disease. Okay. Inflammation, thyroiditis. Okay. Which may not be painful. In some cases, it may be painful. Some may not be. Okay. That could also lead to thyroid issues. Nodules, lumps, cancerous or non-cancerous lumps, tumors that come in thyroid gland. Okay. And these tumors may convert into thyroid cancer. Okay. Uh, and certain medical treatments like if you undergo radiation therapy, thyroid surgery or you are taking some medications, it can also suppress the way how your thyroid gland functions. Or it can trigger your thyroid gland. It can go in opposite directions as well. So these are the common causes that leads to thyroid problems. Pregnancy can also cause thyroid problems. It can lead, uh, if you start your pregnancy with a thyroid issue, hyper or hypothyroidism, pregnancy can worsen it, okay, if you don't treat it. And this will cause problems to the mother as well as the child. It could lead to miscarriage, okay, premature birth of the child. Low birth weight may be because thyroid, thyroid hormone is required for growth and development. Okay, when the, if the baby is not growing or developing in the uterus, you will definitely give birth to a low birth weight baby or small for gestational age baby. Problems with the baby's brain development, as I mentioned, in the fetal life and also in the first few years of life after birth. Okay, iodine is important. Thyroid hormone secretion is important for growth and development of the central nervous system. If a woman is pregnant or planning to become pregnant, you have to talk to the doctor about the risk of having any thyroid dis disorders. Accordingly, some medications will be given to 
continue the pregnancy. When to check with a doctor? When do you have to see a doctor? When you have a sim when you see a symptom of an overactive thyroid gland, or you see an symptom of an underactive thyroid gland, these symptoms we will discuss shortly. Okay, you feel a lump or swelling in your neck. When you swallow food, you find some uh, something that is strapping your food, or you feel that uh, distress while swallowing food or swallowing anything. Okay, concerns about the risk of thyroid problems during pregnancy also, you should always check with an endocrinologist when you are pregnant. So, what are these symptoms, hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism? So, hypothyroidism, cold intolerance. Why? Because skin is not getting enough blood flow. Okay, thyroid gland, thyroid hormone is responsible for for bringing the blood flow and oxygenation towards the skin so that heat elimination can be done. But when the skin is not getting enough blood flow, you will feel cold. You will have cold intolerance. You will not tolerate any slightly cold weather. Okay. There is weight gain. Not a rapid weight gain. Okay. But uh, weight gain of 3 to 4 kgs you can attribute to hypothyroidism, okay? Not more than that. If suddenly in few months you gained around 10 kgs, okay? In three to four months, if suddenly you gained around 10 kgs, you can't say that even if you have hypothyroidism, you can't say it is because of hypothyroidism that you gained this many kgs. Okay? It is mainly because of uh, diet, okay? Hy uh, hypothyroidism related weight gain, will be limited between 3 to 4 kgs, not more than that, okay? Decreased sweating, constipation, depression, irritability, irregular and heavy periods, slow heart rate, brittle nails, muscle pain, joint pain, puffy face, okay? These are the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism when your thyroid is not secreting enough thyroid hormones. Hyperthyroidism, weight loss, weight gain. Okay, it can be weight loss or weight gain, but usually it is weight loss. Short and very light periods. Okay, increased sweating because too much of thyroid hormone will rush your blood towards the skin surface. And there is a lot of heat elimination from your body. And that's why you will always be sweaty. Okay. Nail thickening or nail flaking. Nail either gets thick or and it flakes off. Okay. Uh, layers and layers of nails are getting fla like, fla like flakes it comes off. Puffy bulging eyes. Okay. Heat intolerance. Nervousness and anxiety. Okay. That also runs with sweating. Okay. Sweating, nervousing, nervousness and anxiety comes together. Racing heart palpitation. Okay, that also is associated with nervousness and anxiety. Muscle weakness, diarrhea. Why, why muscle weak, weakness? Because too much of thyroid hormone is breaking down your own muscle protein. Okay, so your muscles will become weaker and weaker day by day. And here in hyperthyroidism, you suffer from a lot of diarrheal issues. Hypothyroidism, you suffer from constipation. Okay, what is a common symptom in both these conditions? Any of this thyroid condition is fatigue, you are tired, you are weak, you don't get good sleep, insomnia and hair loss. Okay, hair loss is seen in both the cases. So, is the symptoms clear to all? The difference in this, in the symptoms of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Is it clear to all? Next, what are the com complications of thyroid problems? An enlarged thyroid gland can lead to goiter or 
it is called goiter okay swollen thyroid gland which is not painful okay but it may cause problems in swallowing when you eat if you sleep or you swallow you will have that distress it because it is putting its weight on your esophagus and your trachea just behind your uh, thyroid gland you have your esophagus and your trachea okay so it will put a growing thyroid gland enlarged thyroid gland will put that pressure over these two food pipe and wind pipe okay so you will have difficulty in swallowing and breathing then graves disease can cause eye and skin problems graves disease is an autoimmune disease okay where your own immunity is attacking the thyroid gland An overactive thyroid can lead to problems like heart problems, rapid heart rate, which we see in hyperthyroidism, problems with your heart rhythm, cardiac arrhythmias, heart failure, okay, loss of bone density, and underactive thyroid gland, that is hypothyroidism, can cause complications like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart problems obesity okay so these are the complications of thyroid disorders complications that need immediate medical attention here nutrition and dietetics will not help only you have to go to the clinic for clinical help medical emergency room okay if there is a thyroid storm okay this is how a thyroid storm looks like thyroid storm sudden rush of high amount of thyroid hormones that is what we call as thyroid storm is a severe access thyroid hormone situation symptoms are fever rapid heart rate definitely vomiting will start person will have delirium delirium means you do not know where you are you you talk something you are not in this reality okay that is del delirium okay you're not conscious you're confused disoriented okay not able to think remember clearly and it happens suddenly okay that is delirium so in case of thyroid storm and the eyes will bulge out like this okay that is a classical sign the eyes will try to protrude out bulge out from the eye socket Okay, and that is a symptom that the person may be suffering from thyroid storm and immediately they have to be taken to the emergency. Then my exodemia, my exodemia, comma. Okay, here this is edema. In edema, swelling, you can see here the difference between both the person's face. The entire face is puffy. It's a rare but life-threatening condition caused by untreated and severe hypothyroidism you have hypothyroidism you're not treating it okay and it leads to severe stage of hypothyroidism not enough secretion of thyroid gland thyroid hormone okay it leads to drowsiness that could make the person go into a coma okay unconsciousness so myxo edema coma edema is there swelling is there the person may shift into coma unconsciousness very slow breathing low body temperature symptoms are just the opposite of it you can see here the eyes are coming out but in myxo edema coma you can see the eyes are going in because of the swelling that is in the preorbital area okay so is is both the complications clear to all access of thyroid hormone leads to thyroid storm Severe hypothyroidism leads to myxoedema coma. Thyroid diseases, it includes hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, thyroid nodules that are tumors or cancer. Okay. And in majority of your primary care centers, endocrinology opd these things can be diagnosed these conditions can be diagnosed the evidence is strongest for adequate but not excessive iodine intake to benefit thyroid health in general you sh your iodine intake should be adequate not too much too much iodine can also 
trigger some thyroid issues. Okay. So, iodine intake should be adequate, not less, not too high, normal, adequate. Okay. As well as selenium supplementation, especially patients who suffer from Graves' disease. That's an autoimmune condition. If you're diagnosed with Graves' disease, selenium supplementation can help. Okay. Then there are certain very few scientific data, not too many studies we have, but very few uh, scientific data that support dietary changes to benefit hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Okay, very few studies like that have been done. Okay, that has a link between dietary changes, what we can do in cases of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. So, hypothyroidism, as we have discussed earlier, it affects up, up to 7% of the general population. Generally, in the entire global population, those who suffer from thyroid disorders, people who suffer from hypothyroidism are more in number as compared to hyperthyroidism. You see more cases of hypothyroidism, okay? Especially in women. Women are more affected by hypothyroidism than men. Iodine deficiency is one of the leading cause of hypothyroidism globally. So generally, people and the population who stay or survive near any mountainous or hilly areas, okay, they are significantly at a higher risk of developing iodine deficiency. Levothyroxine, this is the medication. Levothyroxine as a thyroid hormone replacement is one of the most commonly prescribed medication for hypothyroidism and many food substances can interfere with this medication so doctors will tell you when you eat your thyroid medication make sure you don't eat it with your food okay after having your food keep at least one to two hours gap and then take this levothyroxine medication because a lot of your nutrients that is present in your food can interact with levothyroxine and not allow it to be absorbed by your intestine. Okay, so keep levothyroxine as a separate medication to be eaten separately, not with your meals. Okay, so the uh, symptoms of thyroid uh, hypothyroidism we discussed earlier, thinning of hair, puffy face, dry skin, constipation, cold sensitivity, cold intolerance. Okay, swelling in the limbs, loss of hair, even eyebrow hair, uh, hair is less than thinned out, large and thyroid gland, slow heartbeat, no appetite, fatigue, okay, weight gain, memory issues, always feeling tired even after eating food, carpal tunnel syndrome, risk of carpal tunnel syndrome may, can be there. Then hyperthyroidism, only 1.3% of the general population so far is diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. So it is way less diagnosed than hypothyroidism. Graves disease is one of the leading cause of hyperthyroidism globally. But other toxic or nodular goiter can also be the reason of hyperthyroidism. But Graves disease is one of the most common cause of hyperthyroidism where your immune, immune cells are attacking the thyroid gland and the thyroid gland are producing as a, as a result of that thyroid gland is producing more thyroid hormones okay conventional therapies in this treatment for hyperthyroidism are you give anti-thyroid medication radioactive iodine treatment is given Okay, and thyroid surgery can be done. A part of your thyroid gland can be taken away, okay, to control the excess secretion. And uh, symptoms, hair loss is seen in both the cases, bulging eyes, sweating, enlarged liver, abnormal heart rates, heart, heart palpitation, heart races up, vomiting, diarrhea, high appetite, increased appetite, irregular menstruation is common in both Hand tremors, okay, because hand tremors are associated with nervousness, anxiety. When your heart rate is too high, you sweat a lot, automatically hand tremors are a side effect of this symptoms. 
sleeplessness, vision problem. Dietary iodine and selenium are micronutrients that can modify thyroid antibody deters. Thyroid antibody deters are given um, as a like make to make sure that um, thyroid uh, too much of thyroid hormones can be dealt with thyroid antibody deters. So dietary iodine and selenium can interact with these. Uh, these are the micronutrients that can interact with the antibody titers. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is also an autoimmune disorder and it causes inflammation, thyroiditis, inflammation of the thyroid gland and it can cause goiter. Okay. And other symptoms are sweating, tremoring hands, not able to tolerate heat at all, changes in mood, change in bowel syndromes, fatigue, swelling, okay. These are the signs and symptoms of Hashimoto's disease, Hashimoto's thy thyroiditis. Then thyroid nodules, you can see here small nodules, small benign tumors starts showing up in the thyroid gland, okay thyroid nodules or adenomas Aden what is adenoma when any gland in your body gets a tumor okay any glandular cells in your body gets a tumor we call it adenoma okay since thyroid gland it, it has glandular cells secreting cells hormone secreting cells okay so if there is any nodule or any tumor or any cancer here we call it as an adenoma okay so these are small non-cancerous growth that start at the cell layer of the inner surface of the thyroid gland okay it this nodule can also secrete thyroid hormone okay so if, if there are too many nodules here and there okay these are grow these are nodules growing out of the thyroid gland so thyroid gland is already secreting thyroid hormone but on top of that when these growths happen these nodules starts showing up they when they also start secreting thyroid hormone you go into a state of hyperthyroidism okay so surgically these adenomas can be removed okay if it is an overactive nodule surgically this can be removed then we have thyroid cancer it occurs more often in people who have undergone any radiation to head, neck or chest. Okay. Uh, risk factors uh, are not that clear, but most thyroid cancers can be successfully treated with proper therapy. Okay. So, you, if there you feel a painless lump in your neck that increases in size week after week. Okay. And you see an enlarged thyroid gland. You have difficulty in swallowing and breathing. And the sound changes that your your sound becomes more hoarse and coarse. Okay, that's a symptom of thyroid cancer. Then you have thyroid disorders in women. Women's thyroid disease can affect their hormone balance and cause problems in puberty menstruation, fertility, pregnancy and even postpartum period that is soon after pregnancy you give birth your postpartum period starts okay so a lot of reproductive disorders in women are associated with thyroid disorders okay and thyroid hormone replacement therapy thyroid HRT okay so, thyroid hormones comes in pill form. We have learned that earlier. Levothyroxine. Levothyroxine is the pill used as a treatment for thyroid, uh, an underactive thyroid or hypothyroidism. When your thyroid gland cannot secrete any hormone, okay, this pill is prescribed. And this is the most common prescribed hormone replacement for thyroid, okay, thyroid hormone, thyroxine. Levothyroxine is the name of that pill. It's a gen generic name of that pill, levothyroxine. How does hypothyroidism and pregnancy, how it ha works? What are the signs and symptoms of a 
pregnant woman who is suffering from hypothyroidism or how hypothyroidism affects pregnancy. Okay. So thyroid hormones pass from mother to fetus. Okay. When a woman is carrying a child through her placenta, thyroid hormones also travel to the fetus. Adequate amount of this thyroid hormone is important for the normal growth and, and brain development of the fetus. Okay. And if the mother is suffering from hypothyroidism, she will not produce enough thyroid hormone that can reach the fetus. And fetus may suffer from impaired brain development, growth retardation, low birth weight, miscarriages, stillbirth, premature birth. Okay. So hypothyroidism during pregnancy can be treated safely with thyroid hormones and medication. So complications of hypothyroidism in pregnancy you, uh, the mother may suffer from gestational hypertension that is she will get high BP only during her pregnancy which was not that before okay gestational diabetes she will become diabetic only during the pregnancy she was not diabetic before okay abruptio placenta placenta may abruptly burst open when the labor pain starts okay and usually this happens when the placenta, placenta when you when you can imagine a uterus, okay, just un, uh, just imagine a pot that is upside down, okay, a normal pot that is upside down. So the upper part of the dome shape of the pot, that is the area where majority of the placenta placement should be, okay, upper part of the uterus. But sometimes the placenta plus, uh, placement, if it is near the opening of the uterus, okay, when the mother gets her pregnancy contractions and the pregnancy pain starts, okay, and the, the placenta will also face this severe contractions. And when the child is passing through the birth canal, placenta can burst open. It can put the mother's life and the child's life at risk because of heavy bleeding. That is abruptio placenta. Postpartum hemorrhage. Bleeding does not stop after birth. Okay. Fetal complications like abortions, premature birth, stillbirth. Stillbirth means a child, child born without life. Low birth weight babies. Okay. These are the complications of hypothyroidism during pregnancy. If it is untreated. Postpartum thyroiditis is the inflammation of thyroid gland that occurs after giving birth. Postpartum means after birth. As soon as the child is born, the mother's postpartum period starts. Okay, And it can cause hyper or hypothyroidism. If the thyroid gland undergoes inflammation during the postpartum period, the mother may suffer from either hyperthyroidism, overactive thyroid or underactive thyroid. It is a treatable condition. Okay. About 80% of the cases will resolve after the child's first birthday. Okay, with medication, you have to continue medication till the till one year of time and it will be resolved. The symptoms of postpartum thyroiditis, mother will not be producing enough milk because for milk secretion during lactation, thyroid hormone is required. And if the mother is suffering from hypothyroidism, uh, hy hypothyroid uh, thyroiditis and what happens is that not enough thyroid hormone is there to help the mother lactate okay so decreased milk production decreased milk volume painless goiter swelling of the thyroid gland lots of hair loss depression anxiety moodiness okay mood swings will be there fatigue tiredness these are the symptoms of postpartum thyroiditis Coming to the specific dietary influences on thyroid functioning. So these are the nutrients that we will discuss on when it comes to diet in thyroid disorders. Iodine, goitrogens, cruciferous vegetables, soy products and other trace minerals. So iodine Main functions of iodine, it has to produce thyroid hormones 
why thyroid hormone supports your thyroid function for your growth and development your metabolism to maintain your energy levels okay only when you you can metabolize properly your body your cells will have energy to use okay regulate your body temperature thyroid hormone is uh, iron is required iodine is required So iodine is required to produce thyroid hormone inside the follicular cell of the thyroid gland. Okay. And adequate levels of circulating iodine is taken through diet. Your blood has adequate iodine circulating through it. Okay. And that will be taken up by the thyroid gland. And you get your iodine through your diet. Okay. And common dietary sources of iodine. First main source is iodized salt. All type of seafood. Even seaweed that is the vanaspati of the sea okay that vegetarians can use okay seaweed uh, fish and some breads and grains are also good sources of iodine but not best although eating a regular diet should meet nutritional iodine requirements some individuals who self in impose some restriction in their diet like vegetarians vegans okay they are at a higher risk of developing iodine deficiency because vegetables are not a good source of iodine. Okay, pulses, grains can be to an extent, but vegetables are not a good source of iodine. Okay. Next nutrient is goitrogen. Goitrogen means goiter causing food. Okay, goiter causing substances. What is goiter? Enlargement of thyroid gland is goiter. Okay. So the term goitrogen refers to any substance that can produce goiter. Enlargement of thyroid gland. This is usually accomplished through effects of decreased th uh, uh, thyroidal iodine. Okay, either goitrogen will combine with iodine in such a way that thyroid gland will not be able to absorb iodine okay so goitrogen goitrogen will come in between the absorption of iodine by the thyroid gland that is one way okay they can also act by inhibiting any other components of normal thyroid hormone production okay sometimes they may not uh, uh, interact with iodine but they will inhibit other other components that are required for thyroid hormone production so these are goitrogens Okay, the most common examples of dietary goitrogens are cruciferous vegetables and soy products. So these are the list of cruciferous vegetables. If you <coughs> if you suffer from hypothyroidism or goiter, you have to limit the use of these vegetables in your diet. Doesn't mean you have to completely restrict yourself from this. Okay, like cauliflower, okay, cabbage cassava okay certain millets beans radish these are a regular uh, the, these vegetables are regularly seen in our indian cuisine okay you can't completely neglect them from your diet weekly once or twice you can have it there is no issues but on a daily basis if you are having a food component that is a goitrogen that will not allow your medications to work on you even if you are taking some thyroid medication okay these goitrogen based food will interact with those medication and not allow those medication to work to its full efficiency okay you can still have these hypothyroidism patients can still have these vegetables but limit in a limited version okay once or twice you have 21 meals in a week okay if you are having 21 meals in a week three meals can be made up of these cruciferous vegetables it will not cause any harm okay is it clear to all so far So these are cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables are those 
in the Brassica genus, that is a species of vegetables that includes broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, turnips, cauliflower, collard greens, bok choy. Okay. They are rich in glucosinolates associated with anti-cancerous pro property, but uh, glucosinolate, it's a good, good substance. It has anti-cancerous benefits, but in some or the other way, they inhibit your thyroid hormone production. They, are, they have a very good advantage. They are anti-cancerous. But when considered in large, when you consume them in large proportions, they can inhibit the thyroid hormone production. Okay. Thus, although eating cruciferous vegetables have certainly various health benefits, regular consumption, remember this, regular consumption of large quantities may induce or exacerbate your hypothyroidism consuming them every day you are if you are a hypothyroidism patient okay you don't drink milk you are a vegan you have soy products on a daily basis you have cabbage on a daily basis cauliflower easily available okay broccoli turnips radish these things you have on a daily basis as a part of your vegan diet or a vegetarian diet you don't drink milk but you have soy products instead of that Obviously, you are in including a lot of cruciferous vegetables that will trigger your hypothyroidism, okay? It will not lead to hypothyroidism. Cruciferous vegetables are not known to cause hypothyroidism, but it will trigger the existing hypothyroidism, okay? Please understand that difference. If you have a history of hypothyroidism in your family, Again, you should limit these cruciferous vegetables. When you don't have a history of hypothyroidism in your family, you, do, you, you, you yourself don't suffer from hypothyroidism. You don't have to worry. You can consume all these vegetables, soy, everything. Okay. Only if you are a diagnosed patient or close relatives, blood relatives in your family, majority of them are suffering from hypothyroidism you are in a borderline or at risk of hypothyroidism, then you have to make a conscious choice of limiting cruciferous vegetables in your diet, not restricting, limiting, okay? Soy, dietary soy products like soy milk, tofu, soy sauce, tempeh, any miso containing isoflavanols, okay? These all are soy products, okay? So isoflavanols, which are present in soy, so it's an antioxidant as well. They can inhibit the action of thyroid perox peroxidase. It's an important enzyme required for thyroid hormone synthesis. Thyroid peroxidase is a chemical which is required for thyroid hormone production in the thyroid gland. Okay, But isoflavanols can inhibit the action of thyroid peroxidase. So automatically thyroid hormone production will go down. So, it is proposed that dietary soy intake may increase the risk of hypothyroidism in euthyroid individuals. Euthyroid individuals means people who do not have any thyroid issues. Euthyroid means people who have a healthy thyroid gland. Okay. It is just a proposition. It's not a conclusion. It is a theory. Okay. It is just a theory that dietary soy if taken too much, can increase the risk of hypothyroidism, okay, in healthy thyroid functioning individuals. So, you thyroid uh, individuals, that is people who have normal healthy thyroid glands, if they are living in areas which does not have iodine-rich soil, okay, consuming soy has no adverse effect on uh, serum thyroid function okay if you are an individual who are living in the coastal areas of india not mountainous area hill, not hilly area okay any coastal areas of india mm -hmm. where the soil is rich in iodine where you have access to iodine rich food like seafood and all okay fresh seafood so even if you consume soy on a daily basis mm -hmm. you will have no harm Soy will cause you no harm because from other sources, you are getting your iodine 
requirements met okay why uh, even after having this risk why not just avoid soy okay why why uh, why can't you just avoid soy because there is a very strong evidence based studies that we already have done on soy and which we know the conclusion that soy can reduce the risk of any autoimmune dis disorders breast cancers mortality from breast cancers means death rate from breast cancers prostate cancers hip fractures that is it is a good source of calcium cardiovascular diseases so soy as a product has so many good advantages okay it is such a good nutritious product it has such a good health benefits and advantages just because it increases the risk of hypothyroidism we can't take it out from the diet that is not enough reason to take thyro uh, to take soy out of your diet until the levels become normal thyroid medications has to be taken then you have to closely monitor your thyroid levels thereafter then selenium selenium is a micronutrient important for thyroid hormone metabolism it is the richest dietary sources of selenium is seafood and organ meats and typical sources of uh, selenium in diet are bread grains meat poultry fish and eggs so all majority of the non vegetarian food are the good source of selenium brown rice oat bran brazil nuts sunflower seeds these are few uh, sources in which selenium is a good source not best but good source so some studies have shown the benefit that selenium supplements in individual with autoimmune thyroid diseases okay uh, when the study was done people who had low selenium levels they had a higher risk of getting go uh, goiter or any thyroid nodules that also this study was only done on european women not in any other ethnicity okay not any ethnicity only european women the study was done so this was the conclusion that women who had low selenium levels in their body they had the risk of developing goiter they they had low tsh or t4 levels also okay so that was the association they found in selenium and thyroid thyroid disorders other trace elements like zinc copper magnesium that are also that also have their role in thyroid hormone production and metabolism but it is not well researched yet okay a meta analysis of eight studies have suggested that between the levels of selenium copper and magnesium uh, there was a relation with with thyroid cancer okay if there is too less amount of selenium copper and magnesium in your body there is a high risk of developing thyroid cancer and based on all the scientific evidence based studies we have so far supplementation of these trace minerals just for the purpose of promoting your thyroid function is not supported okay just because you don't want to get thyroid cancer just because you don't want any thyroid disorders you take supplementation of selenium copper magnesium it's not supported that's not a wise choice okay these uh, minerals these micronutrients in adequate levels should naturally come from your diet or from any other multivitamin supplements but it should not be focused on thyroid health okay other dietary considerations that you should look for thyroid coffee decreases the absorption of levothyroxine so do not take coffee and levothyroxine tablet together okay for people who are getting treatment done for hypothyroidism you will be prescribed levothyroxine don't take coffee and levothyroxine together or tea also anything that has caffeine and alcohol as well okay gluten free diets sugar free diets probiotics okay these are advocated for promoting thyroid health but positive association of gluten free sugar free and probiotic diet with thyroid health is not found but for your general health these diets are good 
coming to the myths of about diet and your thyroid gland myth number one you can't eat cruciferous vegetables if you have thyroid disorder as i mentioned you can eat cruciferous vegetables you don't have to be so strict with yourself okay just limit the use of cruciferous vegetables in your diet that's more than enough don't eat cruciferous vegetables on a daily basis three meals a day and every meal you have some you have a cruciferous vegetables avoid that pattern okay you can limit the use of cruciferous vegetables myth number two you should take iodine supplements if you have underactive thyroid there is no need to take additional iodine supplements if you have hypothyroidism levothyroxine is more than enough iodine in its normal level should come from the dietary food okay otherwise it will add too much of iodine supplements could lead to toxicity a gluten-free diet can help with Hashimoto thyroiditis or cure it there is no relation between gluten-free diet and Hashimoto diseases okay myth number four weight gain is from hypothyroidism as I mentioned earlier thyroid issues will not cause you weight gain of more than three to four kgs okay if you are gaining more than 5 kg in a month or in a very short form a span of time gaining more than 10 kgs in a short span of time it's predominantly because of your diet lack of exercise and other factors it's not because of hypothyroidism hypothyroidism definitely your metabolism comes down but it is not that low to give you a weight gain of more than 5 kg okay up, up to 3 kg could be the shift in your weight because of hypothyroidism not more than that and this weight gain is attributed to water weight as well because the body gets swe swelling okay so it's a water weight as well people with thyroid disorders need to be on special diets it's not true you are, you can be on a very normal diet just uh, making few uh, changes here and there if you were completely on soy based products all this while okay shift it into almond oat milk plant based milk okay you can still use tofu here and there so soy milk you can use here and there but don't completely be dependent on soy products if you are a vegan and you have hypothyroidism these are the small changes that you have to do you don't have to be on any special diet conclusion Apart from the definitive role of iodine and selenium deficiency in causation of hypothyroidism, no other nutrient has shown any impact on thyroid health. It's only iodine and selenium which we have concrete studies, evidence-based studies that has shown results of an association with hypothyroidism. No other nutrients have come forward with an evidence to improve your thyroid health okay much remains unknown about thyroid disease and there are areas of uncertainty again modern medicine has to look forward to to do more research okay in these uh, uh, in the areas of uncertainty but so far when it comes to thyroid health it's come the nutrients which we should focus on is iodine and selenium no other nutrients okay Thank you all. That's all for today.